Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Commanding General, welcome to the Change of Command Ceremony, in which Lieutenant Colonel Robert E. Herman will relinquish command to Lieutenant Colonel Thomas E. Bolin, Jr. Today's parade is being executed by the officers and Marines of Marine Wing Headquarters Squadron 3. Please rise for the invocation by Command Chaplain Captain Greg T. Schluter, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose glory is in all the world, we recognize that all authority comes from you and that without you there is no authority. We ask your blessings today on Marine Wing Squad Headquarters Squadron 3 as we celebrate the change of command. Heavenly Father, we commend this squadron to your merciful care, thanking you for the work you have done through your servant, Lieutenant Colonel Eric Herman, during his tenure of command. We thank you for his faithfulness and ask your continued blessings upon him as he moves on to new challenges. We also ask your blessings upon your servant, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Bolin, Jr., as he assumes the mantle of leadership today. Give him your wisdom, guidance, and strength as he leads this squadron to do your will. Be with him in difficult times and help him to command this squadron as you see fit. As Marine Wing Headquarters Squadron 3 continues to fulfill its mission, we pray your continued grace and protection from every evil. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Present day parades in the Marine Corps have their basis in both history and tradition. The mass formation of troops on one long line at close interval made possible the massing of firepower from the muzzle loaded muskets of the past. The adjutant forms the line of battle, and in those early days, that line consisted of two or three ranks, much like in the parade you will see today. The adjutant for today's parade is Second Lieutenant Danielle C. Itell. Sound adjutant's call will begin today's ceremony. The adjutant has formed the line of troops for today's parade. The adjutant returns to her position, facing the line of troops. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of colors.
Thank you. Please be seated. The adjutant will now command, sound off. This will signal the band to parade forward of the assembled line of troops while playing military marching music. The parade adjutant now presents the assembled command to the commander of troops.
Now taking his position is the reviewing officer for today's parade, the commanding general, 3rd Marine Aircraft Wing, Major General Christopher J. Mahoney. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for honors to Major General Mahoney. Thank you. Please be seated. Now taking his position in the reviewing area is the commanding officer, Marine Wing Headquarters Squadron 3, Lieutenant Colonel Robert E. Herman. Now taking his position in the reviewing area is Lieutenant Colonel Thomas E. Boland, Jr. Sergeant Major, deliver the colors to the commanding officer. Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the ceremony's most solemn moment, the actual passing of the command. The battle colors of a Marine Corps unit symbolize the authority and accountability of command. Transferring the colors during the ceremony symbolizes the relinquishing of command by Lieutenant Colonel Robert E. Herman, and by accepting the colors, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas E. Bolin, Jr. accepts command and confirms his total commitment to the Marines and sailors that he will command. Sergeant Major Elena M. Rodriguez is delivering the colors to the commanding officer. From Commandant of the Marine Corps to Lieutenant Colonel Robert E. Herman. Subject, Relinquishment of Command. Effective 10 hundred, 4 June 2021. You stand detached as a commanding officer of Marine Wing Headquarters Squadron 3. Signed, David H. Berger, General, United States Marine Corps. From Commandant of the Marine Corps to Lieutenant Colonel Thomas E. Bolin, Jr. Subject, Assumption of Command. Effective 10 hundred, 4 June 2021. You will assume duties as a commanding officer of Marine Wing Headquarters Squadron 3. Signed, David H. Berger, General, United States Marine Corps.
Who's that? Hello, Red! Red! Ladies and gentlemen, the Commanding General of 3rd Marine Aircraft Wing, Major General Mahoney. As usual in Southern California, we even got the uh, Marine layer to burn off. A special welcome to the families, uh, to the Bolin family, to the Herman family. Annie, great to see you here. And we even let we even let another winged Bolin into the into the mix today, uh, coming down, uh, Tom's brother. So we begin the summer ritual of transitions, PCSs, and today changes of command. Now, you might hear the words bittersweet, you might hear people getting nostalgic, and, and that's all good, but to me, it is required and necessary to keep the blood pumping and to keep the organism healthy. So the change that you see today is part of the life cycle of the Marine Corps, and it's actually a good thing. That said, uh, I want to welcome an accomplished and seasoned officer, officer and aviator, recognize a transfer of authority to him from another accomplished, seasoned officer and aviator, and that's what we're here to do today. But first I'd like to put command in a little bit of perspective. Uh, when I was down at Hangar 1 as CO of VMFA 242, my mission was fairly precise. Fighter attack effects in support of the MADCAP, very easy to focus. 250 Marines, zero Major Generals, zero Colonels, zero Lieutenant Colonels, seven Majors, one E-9, and about a dozen MOSs. Pretty easy to get that thing going in one direction and focus. Bit of perspective. MWHS-3, 508, 88 Marines and Sailors. A Major General, 10 Colonels, 20 Lieutenant Colonels, 32 Majors, wait for it, 24 E-9s. 24 E-9s a band and 153 MOSs, 153 different specialties. Now you tell me how you get your mind around that, how you get your arms around 153 specialties, 588 guys, not to mention 24 E-9s. Extremely challenging, extremely difficult. But I will tell you, we're here to reflect upon the fact that it was done to the first order by Lieutenant Colonel Herman and throw the challenge out in front of Lowe as we go forward. But it doesn't just happen. Everybody knows that. It doesn't happen because you got selected. It won't happen because you got selected. It won't happen because you're a nice guy and you have a nice family. So three, three things stand out to me about Lieutenant Colonel Herman. The first uh, is engaged leadership. And that's not just a marquee. Now appearing, engaged leadership, successful follow -up. It is, in the main, to me, two things. You recognize the weaknesses, you train to it, you shore them up, you make them stronger. But you flip the coin over, and just as importantly, if not more importantly, you recognize your strengths and you exploit them to success. And you saw that in spades now with Lieutenant Colonel Hill. The second thing is relationships and managing them. 2049, 10 colonels, saying I'm the commander is not going to be good enough. It's not. You have to develop the relationships at a personal level and go as deeply as you possibly can in order to succeed. And I will tell you, from observation and from interaction, uh, you did that in fine form. And lastly, is uh, something that may, might be a little bit more esoteric, but it's command presence. You can't walk up to a colonel as a lieutenant colonel and say, I'm the commander. He'll, he'll look at his collar and go, that's, that's excellent. I'm not, but I'm me and you're not. That sort of thing. So you have to have a presence that brings the authority to command to that point to get your point, to get your effect, to get your objective across. And I watched you do it on numerous occasions. Very well done. So whether it was a, a pandemic that changed the way we work, the way we live, the way we behave toward each other, whether it was supporting numerous deployments, exercises, and the churn of everyday staff life, uh, which is fairly fast paced, third marine aircraft wing that gets after supporting 15,000 marines and sailors that are out there in the field. You and your outfit were the quintessential enabler, which is code word 
for unsung heroes, which by definition means you do your best, you get the job done, and you watch someone else take the lion's share of the credit. You embrace that role, you attacked it, and you crushed it. And for that, my, my hat is off to you from the corner office for watching that. But talking about unsung heroes, Annie, we know that you were 51% uh, of that command team. Uh, and your efforts, believe me, do not go unnoticed. And the support that you gave to your husband and the way that reflected on the command uh, was superb. Now, we are going to be called to the point of friction at some point. Uh, I'm a little bit old. It may not be during my time, but it's going to happen. When you look at a command team like this, when you look at the effect that this command team had, I know that when that time comes, it's a question of when, it's not a question of if. When we build and espouse command teams like this, that's what will get us to the objective. That's what will get us the main part of victory. So once again, gratitude and thanks, Andy. Superb job. All right, Loaf. Welcome. Welcome to you and your family. Besides being a low country lad, you know, the heat and humidity of Beaufort, South Carolina, besides having the indelible length of the T-bolts on you and the checkerboards, uh, you come with a tremendous reputation. Whether it's up at Top Gun, whether it's at the hallway, whether it's with the sweat hogs, whether it's with the T-bolts or the checkerboards, like I said, or a board ship, uh, everybody knows who you are. They know what you're going to bring with, it, uh, with you for talent, for force, for some of the things that I just talked about. But it will be a challenge, and it will be fast-paced, but you were selected for a reason to bring out all those things and uh, succeed like your predecessor did. So welcome, welcome to everybody, uh, and Semper Fidelis. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Robert E. Herman. Major General Mahoney, Colonel Harp, Colonel Steele, Sergeant Major Wilson, Command Master Chief Adam Warren. Colonels, Commanders, Sergeants Major, Master Gunnery Sergeants, colleagues, friends, and of course family. Thank you so much for being out here on this glorious day uh, to take part in this time-honored tradition. A year ago, we were doing this virtually. So it is very uh, gratifying to see people in person, uh, and I thank you for, for being here. But an event like this does not come together easily, and I think we need to recognize some key participants, uh, key people that put this thing together. Sergeant Major Rodriguez and our staff, the color guard, uh, the setup, the teardown crews, uh, all the external Marines that supported, and of course the 3rd Marine Aircraft Wing Band, who uh, just makes the ceremony that much better. So if I could get a round of applause for all of you. <laughs> Major General Mahoney, thank you for your comments. Thank you for giving me the opportunity uh, to be the Marine Wing Headquarters Squadron 3 Commander. Thank you for giving me the decision space to meet our requirements uh, and our challenges. Uh, I'm greatly appreciative. The Marine Wing Headquarters Squadron has a rich history and I am very fortunate to be a part of that squadron's legacy. Uh, but really the strength of this squadron are the 580 plus Marine sailors and civilians that fill its ranks. I've been inspired daily by their hard work, their dedication, and their sense of duty to do something that is greater than themselves. And for that, I'm honored to be a part of this. I'd like to personally say thank you and uh, express my gratitude to some key individuals that helped me along the way, providing their, their time, their mentorship in my professional development. Colonel Steele, Colonel Jaros, uh, and countless others. You gave me your time, you gave me your honest feedback and critiques, and you made me a better leader and a better decision maker, and I thank you for that. I never thought or expected uh, to face a global pandemic uh, for the bulk of my command team. Uh, but as the nation's 911 force, the Marines did what Marines do. They saw the challenge, they rose to that challenge, and they adapted as well as they could to get the job done. I'm extremely proud of their hard work and efforts amongst the changing policy and the myriad of uh, changing uh, 
actions that took place over the last 15 months. I certainly couldn't have, couldn't have navigated uh, a global pandemic without the support uh, and uh, experience of Captain Shwehat, our wing surgeon. Sir, I thank you for our frequent talks, your mentorship, uh, your expertise, your patience, and uh, I'm so blessed to, to have built a relationship with you to help me make better decisions as we protected our force. So thank you. Uh, I'm not alone. I had uh, an incredible uh, staff at the command post that helped me out, and, and the names are, are too many to mention, but a few do, uh, do stand out for mentioning here. Uh, to my three XOs over the two years, Major O'Driscoll, Weinfeld, Major Christie, thank you for turning uh, ideas into actions and leading the staff. Thank you for shouldering the load and providing me that sounding board. Uh, I appreciate it. My officers, Major Gravel, my young lieutenants, Lieutenant Hurtado, Ball, Ligon, Hurd, Itel, thank you so much for your energy, uh, tireless work ethic, and relentless uh, job accomplishment in, in pursuing a job well done. Keep up that good work. Uh, the Marine Corps is in great hands as you come up in the ranks. Finally, to Sergeant Major Rodriguez, who I know is probably putting out fire somewhere around here. Uh, I can't imagine a better person to have by my side for these two years. Actually, we definitely leaned on you for your support uh, as we went through some challenges. Uh, we're grateful for the dog walking, the dog sitting, the uh, uh, taking care of the house and other things as we live at the hospital. So I thank you very much for everything that you have done for us. Uh, we cannot pay it back, but all I can say is that, that we love you and we appreciate your support. My wife, Annie, my son, Andrew, uh, you are my everything. Annie, thank you so much for everything that you have given me. Your strength and ability amazes me daily. Um, I knew that the home front was in good hands uh, with you, uh, and your strength and everything that you do just behind the scenes, it, it allowed me to, to focus on the Marines and Sailors and, and allow me to be a better commander, and I thank you very much for everything. Lieutenant Colonel Boland, this is a great day. Uh, I am so excited uh, to see what you do to take the Marines and sailors and civilians of this exceptional unit to the next level. Your past experiences, your reputation, you are set up uh, very well to lead uh, the next challenge that we face. Uh, you will be challenged in command, uh, but I know that you will hit, hit it head on uh, and your resolve will carry us through the day. I look forward uh, to seeing what you accomplish. I wish you all of the best and I look, uh, look forward to working with Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce the new commanding officer of Marine Wing Headquarters Squadron 3, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Bowen, Jr. Wow, thanks, Pee Wee. Uh, colonels, Sergeants Major, senior enlisted fellow commanders, friends and family, thank you all for being here today. Uh, looking out amongst the crowd, this is truly an honor. Uh, I'm humbled to be standing here. Uh, General Mahoney, sir, thank you for the kind words. Uh, I'm ready for the challenge, uh, and I'm looking forward to being part of your team uh, and working with everyone as we go forward. Uh, I'd like to take a second to, to recognize a few key individuals uh, that have been instrumental uh, to me uh, getting to this position. So, returning the favor, Pee Wee, first off, um, thank you for the ridiculously thorough and professional turnover <laughs> that you gave me for the past couple weeks. Um, you and I didn't, didn't know each other three, four months ago, uh, but there's absolutely no way that I would have been able to piece together the 150 different MOSs, the 18 different entities, uh, to figure out what a wing tank for squadron does uh, without the, the program that you drew, drew up and we executed. The dedication and the passion that you have for this command uh, was evident in everything that we did. Uh, I truly am grateful to you, uh, and I've lucky to be falling in after you uh, in this position. Thank you. Um, to my parents, Tom and Lane, who came all the way from Maine, um, thank you guys for being here. Even though I know you guys, there was no way that you were going to, to miss this trip. Um, it goes without saying, I think everybody knows that we're all a product of our upbringing childhood in some way, shape, or form, uh, good or bad. Um, as I re reflect on getting to this position, uh, my experiences, undoubtedly I know, uh, you guys were instrumental in setting the foundation for my successes. 
uh, the core values that we hold dear in our naval service were always evident because of you two. Uh, if you start something, make sure you finish it. Commitment. Do what you say you're going to do. Take pride in what you do. Honor. Help those along the way that maybe need some help themselves. Courage. Thank you both for the example that you set. Thank you both for doling up the discipline you did. It was often needed, I'm sure. Um, and thank you for the unconditional love that you guys continue to provide. I love you. Uh, to my sister Liana and her sweet little, my nephew, I guess, right? Uh, Avery, thank you for coming all the way from Boston. Uh, to my brother, Lieutenant Colonel Select, who is also known as a major in the Marine Corps, Marcus. Thank you for being here. Thank you guys for your, your love and support. Uh, to all the Marines, sailors, civilians, uh, everyone, that, everyone that I've sat down with over the past couple weeks uh, in this command, thank you all for your professionalism and helping get me up to speed uh, to face this challenge uh, as we go forward here. Uh, to the Marines on the uh, field, the, the ceremony field, I undoubtedly know that all of you volunteered to be out there. So with that, thank you for the the time and effort and patience uh, you have to make the ceremony uh, the joy of what it is today. And finally, to the band, um, it's great to see you guys back in action. Uh, as I reflect again back to the, the ceremonies that I've had uh, in my career and seen, you never remember what the new guy says up here, right? But what you do remember are the feelings of pride and joy that you see uh, in our band uh, marching before us. So with that, thank you. To all the Marines, sailors, and civilians of Marine Wing Head Headquarters Squadron 3, uh, as we begin this journey together, there's a lot of uncertainty uh, in it, and we can't, we don't know what will happen, right? Uh, but the one thing that is guaranteed and that we do know that has been st stated and talked about before, underscored throughout history, Evidenced by the pandemic that we all faced is that we can't predict what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day or the next. But what I do know is if we come together as a team, if we put aside all of our egos, our self-interests, if we have a bias for action, and we just execute the basics brilliantly, there's no challenge that we will ever face that we can't overcome. Uh, I need everybody in this command uh, to... <clears throat> be ready mentally and physically to communicate efficiently and effectively to uphold and enforce the Marine Corps standards and every single day to get just a little bit better so that not if but when our number is called we do right by those that have gone before us and uphold the legacy of our Corps. I'm humbled to be standing up here before you all today. Uh, it's an honor to be a part of your team and I look forward to serving with each and every one of you as we start this journey. Thank you, and Sefer Fidelis. In lieu of flowers, the Herman and Bowen families will be making a donation to Brady Children's Hospital, Ronald McDonald House. Both donations will be going on behalf of Marine Wing Headquarters Squadron 3. Commanding Officer of Marine Wing Headquarters Squadron 3, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas E. Boland, Jr. March the command in review. Aye, sir.
Lieutenant Colonel Bowen would like to invite all past commanding officers of Marine Wing Headquarters Squadron 3 to join him in the reviewing area for the pass and review. As a reminder, please rise as the colors pass in front of your position and remain standing for Anchors Away and the Marines Hymn. It is now customary that Marines present and who have served honorably sing the first verse of the hymn. The commander of troops for today's parade is Major Calvin B. Patton. The 3rd Marine Aircraft Wing Band, under the direction of Staff Sergeant John Geary. The drum major is Staff Sergeant Zachary Hyde. The Marine Wing Headquarters Squadron 3 Color Sergeant is Sergeant Anthony S. Jeter. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. On behalf of the commanding officer, officers and Marines of Marine Wing Headquarters, Squadron 3, thank you for your attendance. Semper Fidelis. At this time, Lieutenant Colonel Bowen and Lieutenant Colonel Herman would like to extend an invitation to join them at the Officers Club for a reception. <laughs>